Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. Well, I'll give Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets this much. You've never seen anything quite like this movie before, and this is a film that begs to be seen in 3D, and IMAX 3D at that. Unfortunately, it happens to be released into theaters the same weekend that all of the IMAX screens will be taken up with Dunkirk. So, bummer. Even more unfortunately, this movie with a script that contains some of the most original and inventive concepts, ideas, and settings in recent movie memory also contains some of the most hackneyed writing and woeful miscasting I've ever seen. The result is a gloriously spectacular hot mess that, unlike most cinematic dumpster fires, produces in its flames some infinitely alluring and fascinating colors and dimensions as it burns. I was never able to look away, and I was never not having fun. So let's just get the bad stuff out of the way. This script's tendency to over-explain or clumsily explain everything starts early, when we're first introduced to Valerian and Loreline, two government agents slash partners slash will they or won't they lovers who work on behalf of the Earthlings on a massive floating melting pot of alien civilization floating out in space called Alpha. <sighs> Need to catch my breath after saying all that. You want to know how I know all that information? Because the movie just tells you. First of all, the characters of Valerian and Loreline start the movie by discussing with each other, using on-the-nose dialogue, exactly who and what they are, what they mean to each other, and what their relationship is. Ugh. Then, when they pull up to Alpha, they ask their ship's computer to rattle off the entire backstory of the place where they live and work, just so the audience can learn all about it. That would be like the President of the United States riding in his limo with his staff going, Now, Mr. President, on your left is the Capitol Building, that's where the Congress meets. And coming up is the Washington Monument, and then just past the Potomac there is the White House, where your oval-shaped office is. Okay, okay, I got it. You, you know I live here, right? It's just clumsy. There's an instance where we already know who the bad guy is. We've seen him do awful bad guy stuff. But then in one scene, there's a flashback where they intentionally hide his identity by showing him from behind, only to reveal him later in the story by showing that same scene from another angle. It's like, come on, we knew that was the bad guy. Why are you playing? In addition to the leads having no chemistry whatsoever, and at least one of them, Dane DeHaan, being completely miscast as the lovable rogue Valerian. Now, the jury's still out on Cara Delevingne, but I'm mostly in favor of her performance, and I can chalk up most of my problems with her character to the stilted dialogue. The story is clunky and meandering, especially in the middle section where characters have to go on little mini-quests to retrieve items or people that they will need to retrieve the next item or person until things near the end start to get exciting again. But you know what? You know what? Those detours were all fun! Rihanna's ridiculous subplot involving a scenery-chewing Ethan Hawke and a ridiculous alien shape-shifting striptease pole dance thing. Oh, it was weird! I've never seen anything like it. And you know, that's actually something. The opening mission, which involves a heist set in an interdimensional shopping mall, it was inventive and fun, and I've never seen anything like it. And this planet that you see all over the trailer with these beautiful beaches and lithe, humanoid, androgynous, bluish people, that was pretty dope too. This movie just burned images into my eyeballs that I won't soon forget. And the movie as a whole just keeps throwing these fun ideas at you with reckless abandon, creatures and inventions and environments and CGI fire works that, I'll be damned, made me forgive and forget all of the shortcomings of this movie, and at the end I just sort of have to kind of shake my head but applaud at the same time. Ha! Shockingly, I award Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets a medium bag of popcorn. This movie, like director Luc Besson's earlier Fifth Element, has cult classic written all over it. The sheer size and scope of the ideas on display must be seen to be believed, and on as big a screen as possible, and in 3D. All the better to bask in the color and creativity on display, and ignore the glaring deficiencies of the writing and the casting. Because, oh, there are deficiencies, make no mistake. But I'm betting that if you give yourself over to this movie, you'll be having too much fun to either notice or care. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more and support us by clicking subscribe while you're there and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets in the comments as well. Let me have it. I'm sure there's going to be a wide variety of points of view on this one. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel and I'm kind of tired. I'm just going to pop a cup of Valerian and take a little nap.